Chapman, and this is the fourth video cast in our seri series on the cell theory. And in this video cast, we're going to focus on the discovery of multicellularity, which is a fancy way of saying scientists figured out that all living things, even really big things like plants and animals, are built from collections of cells arranged as tissues. So, what about the rest of the cell theory? We've spent the first uh, three video casts talking about cells coming from pre-existing cells. Now we're going to look at these first two, the first two ideas of the cell theory. The idea that all living things contain at least one cell, and the second idea that cells are the smallest units of living matter. And the first scientist we're going to um, learn a little bit about is a guy named Matthias Schleiden, and he was a German living from 1804 to 1881, so his life pretty much spanned the 19th century. And he studied plant tissues using the new microscopes, which were being made better and better every single year. Uh, there's a microscope sitting right here on the table. Okay. Um, he looked at all sorts of different types of plants, and he theorized that all plants are built from very similar cells. So by looking at lots and lots of different types of plant tissues, he noticed that plant tissues all looked basically the same. So he made the, he made up he came up with the idea that all plants are made from a similar structure or a similar architecture of cellular shape, okay? what we now refer to as plant cells. Um, I have no idea why this guy has his hand stuck in his jacket. Um, I've been told that's because um, in the 19th century, um, it was just the thing to do when guys got their pictures taken. Um, Napoleon did it too. The next scientist is Theodore Schwann. I believe he was German, but I'm not completely sure. He lived from 1810 to 1882, again, a 19th century scientist, and he theorized that animals develop from cells that divide into new cells. All right, So he kind of did what Schleiden had did with plants, but he studied animals, and he theorized that all animals are built from dividing cells, just like plants. All right, So he's kind of the animal side of the multicellular life um, situation. Finally, a guy named Rudolf Virchow in 1821 to 1902, notice again, solidly in the um, 19th century, slightly made it into the 20th century, he read about the work of Schleiden and the work of Schwann, and he studied um, cells, and he noticed that cells divided. Okay, so when you watch a living cell, cells have the ability to split in two, so one cell can become two cells. So he discovered what we now know as cell division, and he theorized that all cells, all cells, including plants and animals, actually come from pre-existing cells that divide. All right, so he's credited with discovering cell division. And, <coughs> excuse me, as lab techniques and micros microscope equipment got better and better, uh, scientists were able to see more and more um, in connection to dividing cells. Of course, to observe a dividing cell, you have to keep it alive long enough for it to be able to do this. And that's difficult to do and to observe at the same time under a microscope. But Rudolf Virchow gets credit for discovering dividing cells. And so he theorized that all cells come from pre-existing cells that divide. All right. So let's combine these ideas here. If we combine the work of Schleiden, okay, remember Schleiden did the, did the um, plants, okay, uh, Schwann, he did the animals, okay, Schleiden with plants, Schwann with animals, and Virchow kind of with all cells. These three, the work of these three scientists is where we get the these two ideas of the cell theory, all right? So what I want you to see in these video casts is that the cell theory didn't just fall out of the sky fully formed. It's evolved over at least 400s of, 400 years of work done by many different people in many different countries. Okay, so the cell theory unifies uh, biology, and it's considered to be one of the main theories in the entire discipline. Okay, it makes a lot of things make sense. Um, maybe one day if we discover life somewhere else in the universe that's not cellular, we'll have to change it. But for right now, we now know that these three ideas are all true. All right, all things contain at least one cell. Cells are the smallest units of life. You can't break them up without killing them. And that all cells come from cells that were alive before them, or what we call pre-existing. All right, thanks for listening, and I'll talk to you soon.